Toxic Fairy Tales. The Giant's Three Strands of Hair. Once upon a time, in a small village, there was a poor woman who had a little handsome son. The villagers predicted her son had a good fortune, and he would marry a princess when he grew up. One day, while walking, the king asked the guard next to him, "Is there any news recently?" Your Majesty, there is a newborn baby in the village. People in the kingdom are speculating that he will marry the princess in the future. What? He's such a poor kid. How could he suit my daughter? I will never let that happen. In order to prevent their marriage, the king pretended to be a merchant and went to the kid's home. Congratulations! I really like this baby. Let me take care of him. Dear sir, I know we are poor, but we also want to raise our own son. Thank you for your kind offer. If you let me raise him, I will give you a lot of gold and silver, and you can buy a new house. I am wealthier, therefore his future will be more successful. Plus, I'll buy him lots of stuff. Ah, oh, that makes sense. My son is so lucky. If he's raised well, he'll definitely have a good career. Well, goodbye, my son. I hope you have a good life. <laughs> With the gold and silver and the king's promise, the baby's parents agreed to give him their son. After receiving the baby from the couple, the king took him away, put him in a chest, and then floated it down the river. The chest was gradually drifting away. The king was very satisfied when he got rid of the kid, but the chest did not sink at all. It just kept floating. Finally, it drifted to a riverbank and was picked up by a childless couple. Oh, the Lord has heard our prayer and has given us a baby boy. The couple took the baby home and named him Harry. Twenty years later, Harry grew up and became a handsome and intelligent man. One night, while the king was inspecting the kingdom, it rained heavily. He knocked on the door of the miller's house and took shelter from the rain. Recognizing the king, the miller invited him to go in and treated him well. Your Majesty, please enjoy your tea. The tea is good. <clears throat> the tea is good, and you're also a good boy. Hey, man, is, is he your son? Oh, him! Isn't he great? Your Majesty, his name is Harry, and we adopted him. I found him twenty years ago in a floating chest on a river. The king was stunned when he found out that the miller's son was the kid he tried to get rid of twenty years ago. He immediately had a plan to kill Harry again. I uh, went out to inspect the kingdom today and forgot to tell the queen. Now I want you to help me out. Bring this letter to the palace. Can you do that for me, please? Harry did not know the king's scheme, so he immediately agreed. Your Majesty, I will do my best. Harry took the letter and the seal of the king, then immediately set off. Harry did not know that the king wrote to order the queen to imprison him when he arrived. He was gone for a long time, then got lost in a forest. Harry followed the direction where the light came from. He was surprised to see a small house in the middle of the forest. With the lights on inside. Oh, great! I'll go in there and ask for a rest. Harry went to the little house and asked to stay for a night. It was a gentle old lady's house. Where are you from, and where do you want to go? How kind of you, madam. My name is Harry. The king asked me to bring a letter to the queen at the palace. Please let me stay here tonight. Please have some cake and leave before midnight. Can I please sleep on the couch or near the chimney? This is a cruel robber's house, and I am his mother. At midnight he will come back. I'm afraid he'll kill you. Ah,、uh, that's okay. I'm exhausted. I can't walk any more. Seeing Harry tired, the old woman had to let Harry sleep over. 
At midnight, the robber went home and was very angry when he saw a stranger sleeping on his couch. Who's sleeping on my couch, Mom? It's a pitiful boy. He has to bring the king's letter to the queen, but he got lost. So we asked to sleep in our house. Didn't you tell him I was a cruel robber man? Please don't harm him. The robber was curious, so he read the letter. When he saw that the king told the queen to imprison Harry and not to let the princess meet him, the robber felt very mad. He decided to write another letter to order the queen to marry the princess to Harry before the king returned to the palace. Then he put the letter back in Harry's pocket. In the early morning when Harry woke up, the robber had left the house already. Harry said goodbye to the old woman. Goodbye, old woman. Then brought back the letter to the palace. Finally, Harry arrived at the king's palace. While finding the palace's entrance, he saw a beautiful girl watering the plants in the garden. She was Princess Eliza. Princess Eliza was very surprised to see Harry. Harry fell in love with her at first sight. And the princess also fell in love with this good-looking appearance. Who are you? Where are you from? And where do you want to go? I am Harry. I'm a miller's son. The king ordered me to bring his letter to the queen. But I didn't know the way to the palace, and I got lost with a cruel robber. I am Princess Eliza. I can take you to meet my mother. Then Princess Eliza led Harry to the queen's palace. Your Majesty, I'm Harry from a milling family. The king ordered me to bring this letter to you. After saying that, Harry immediately offered the letter to the queen. The king gave me this seal for authentication. But the queen and the princess were very surprised to see the seal. It is a very nice seal. The princess said, That's my father's favorite seal. <laughs> Listening to what the king wrote in the letter, the queen urgently held a wedding for the princess and Harry. Everyone was very happy and blessed the young couple. By the time the king returned, the wedding was already finished. He was very angry when he knew that the queen held a wedding for Harry and Eliza. Why would you hold such a ridiculous wedding for them? Why did you disobey my order, dear wifey? Who changed the letter? The king took the letter from the queen and read it. He was so mad that the letter was not written by him, and he assumed that Harry had faked it. Harry was also surprised that the letter had been switched, because he had never opened it before. Oh, your majesty, I never dared to open the letter, or read it, or write a new one. Father, I don't believe he is that kind of a person. So what did you say in the real letter? The king could neither tell the truth, nor accept Harry marrying his daughter. He immediately had a plan. Uh, uh, all right. You have married my daughter already. Um, but if you want to continue living with the princess, my daughter, you have to bring back uh, three golden strands of hair from the giant. Dad, that is too hard for him. That wicked giant might eat him. Yes, she's right. No one can approach the giant. <laughs> I have decided. No one can change my mind. Your Majesty, I will definitely get three golden strands of hair from the giant. Harry courageously tried his best to find three golden strands of hair from the giant. On the way to find the giant, Harry visited a large citadel. He was stopped and questioned by a guard. Halt! Who are you and where do you want to go? I am Harry, Princess Eliza's husband. The king has sent me to get three golden strands of hair from the giant. Or if you can answer this question, you can pass. Yes, please ask me. In our citadel, there is a magical well. In the past, it has always produced very good wine. Now the well is dry, so there's no wine anymore. Do you know why? Okay, wait for me to come back and I will answer your question. The brave man continued on his journey. 
Another day had passed, and Harry came to the gate of another citadel. A guard there stopped and questioned him. Hi, who are you and where do you want to go? I am Harry, Prince Eliza's husband. I'm looking for the giant's three golden strands of hair for the king. If you can answer this question, you can get through. Yes, please ask me. In our citadel, there is a magic apple tree. It was always lush and produced lots of golden apples. Now the tree is dead. It doesn't even have a leaf. Do you know why? Okay, wait for me to come back and I will answer your question. Harry continued to go find the giant. When he reached a riverbank, he had asked a man to ferry him across the river. The boat was floating on the river. Oi, who are you and where do they want to go? I am Harry, Princess Eliza's husband. I am looking for the giant's three golden strands of hair for the king. If you can answer this question, I will help you across the river. Yes, please ask. I've been stuck with this job for many years. I always have to ferry people across the river because there's no one to take over for me. Do you know why? Okay, wait for me to come back and I will answer your question. Then Harry continued on his journey. He kept walking for a long time to find the giant. Finally, he arrived at the giant's house. An old woman opened the door for Harry. Who are you and why do you come here? Good day, ma'am. I'm Harry, Princess Eliza's husband. The king ordered me to get three golden strands of hair from the giant to have a chance to live with my wife. I realize this is awkward, but... You are such a very brave man. All right, just eat first, and then I will find a way to help you. After Harry finished eating the meal, the old lady turned Harry into an ant and told him to stay quiet in her pocket and listen carefully. At midnight, the giant returned home. After eating, the giant went to bed and fell asleep. As usual, the old woman went into his room and rid him of bugs while he was sleeping. When the giant was fast asleep, the old woman picked one strand of his golden hair and accidentally woke him oh, up. Oh, Mom! What are you doing, Mom? That hurt! I just fell asleep, but I had a nightmare. I was too scared, so I startled. Oh, what was your nightmare about, Mom? I dreamed of a well which produced a lot of wine. Suddenly it dried up, and there was not even a drop of water. Mom, I had the same dream. There's a toad sitting in the sp there's a toad sitting in the spring of the well. Just pick up the toad, then the wine will come out like before. The old lady continued catching bugs on the giant's head. Waiting for him to sleep soundly, she picked another strand of hair on his head and she woke him up again. Oh, mo wha Mom, where did you... Ow, that hurts. Oh, we had a nightmare again. What do you mean we? I was sleeping. I dreamed of a lush apple tree, which produced a lot of golden apples. Suddenly it withered, and now there is not even a leaf. Okay, Mom, maybe there's a mouse eating the apple tree's roots. Go catch the mouse in your dream. Let me sleep. The giant went back to sleep, and the old lady continued searching for the bugs. Exhausted, the giant quickly fell fast asleep. The old lady picked a third strand of his hair and woke him up again. Oh, Mom. Okay, what is it? What's going on? Sorry, I just had another nightmare. Really? What happened in your dream this time, Mom? I dreamed of a boatman who had been carrying people across the river for many years, and he had to wait for a long time, but no one ever looked for him. How do I deal with this? Mom, go back to sleep. And when there's a customer who wants to cross the river, just slide the paddles into his or her hands so the customer will have to replace him in the ferry. 
No, seriously. Let me sleep. Oh, I see. Okay, just take a rest and sleep well. Don't worry, I will not have nightmares anymore. In the morning, when the giant left his house, and the old woman turned Mary back into a human, the old woman handed three strands of golden hair to Harry. These are three strands of golden hair, and the three answers you must have heard clearly. Hmm. Yes, I remember everything. Thank you so much, madam. Harry happily said goodbye to the kind old lady. Goodbye, kind old lady. And he set out to return to the palace. Everything went well, and he walked very fast. Soon, Harry arrived at the river. He asked the fairy man from last time to take him across the river. Hmm, if I tell him right now, he'll slide the paddles into my hands. Please ferry me to the other side first, and then I will give you the answer. The fairy man agreed to ferry Harry across the river to get the answer. When he arrived at the other side of the river, he told the fairy man. So here's what you do. When a guest wants to cross the river, just slide the paddles into that person's hands. Jump out, and that person will then be the ferryman. The fairy man thanked Harry and said goodbye to him. Harry continued on his way back to the palace. Then he arrived at the citadel, where there was a withered apple tree. The guards were waiting for his answer. Oi, tell us the answer you promised. There is a mouse chewing on the apple tree root. Just catch it, and the apple tree will be full of fruit just like it was in the past. The guard did exactly what Harry told him. The apple tree immediately became green, fruitful as before. The guard was happy. The guard thanked and gave Harry two donkey coaches full of gold. Then Harry continued on his journey. He returned to the castle where the well was dry. The guards were there waiting to get an answer from Harry. Uh, now please tell me the answer just as you promised. There is a toad sitting in the spring of the well. Just pick it up, and the well will be filled with wine again, just like it was in the past. The guard followed Harry's instructions. The magical well was immediately filled with wine as before. The guard was very happy. The guard thanked Harry and gave him two coaches full of gold. Harry continued his journey. Harry finally arrived at the palace. He brought back four coaches full of gold. Harry presented the giant's three golden strands of hair to the king. Your Majesty, I have brought back three golden strands of hair. The king was surprised to see that Harry had accomplished his difficult challenge. Not only that, but Harry also brought back four coaches full of gold. Eliza really admired Harry's courage. Harry, you are not only able to get the giant's three golden strands of hair as I requested, but you also became very rich. Now I can agree to let you marry my Princess Eliza. Harry and Princess Eliza lived happily ever after in the palace. 